Evelyn is in Lethbridge, Alberta. Hi there. Hi there. I had a question about um, T and H, and I'm wondering what would be my exit point on this stock. And with all the goings on in corn, should I be holding it through the winter? It's quite volatile. Um, yeah, I just, what's my exit point? Thanks okay. so much. Bye. So we may be a little bit odd in this. Uh, our belief is if we buy 20 stocks and we're trying to buy improving situations, uh, four or five are going to do much better than you expected. They're getting better faster than you thought. Seven or eight will be pretty good and a bunch don't work. The natural tendency on behalf of most investors is to say, I've done well here, let's take my profit. And then on the other hand, you know, something isn't working out quite as well. They wind up saying, well, it's cheaper than what I paid for it. It's a good company. It's well managed. It'll come back. And they wind up sitting with underperforming assets that get lower and lower and lower. It's just not how you make money. Yeah. So, you know, we feel very strongly that when you've got a winning position and it's working and it's behaving better than every company in the industry, stay with it. Stay with it as long as it continues to do well. Often, companies continue to do better than you think for much longer than you expect. And so T and H is one of those companies. We don't own it, and I would like to own it. This is Terra Nitrogen. Here's the stock. Yeah. So, so if you take a look at the fertilizer stocks in general, Potash, Agrium, uh, and the rest of the group, they've gone through a consolidation over the last couple of months. And a lot of them have chopped sideways and have been a little lower uh, on concerns about grain prices and so on. Uh, and, and Terra Nitrogen has just continued to chug along. Now, I don't know whether it is just specifically operations or whether there's something else going on. They've had a great ramp up in the revenue line over the last four, four quarters, up 7%, then up 28, then up 38, then 58. So it's been a great ramp up in revenues. <clears throat> but I would say, you know, stock against a very tough market over the last two weeks has been making new highs every day. And then I would say in the last two, three days, it's become more evident to me that this little correction in the uh, fertilizers may be done. So we actually, we bought some Agrium today, and uh, we've been out of the group for a while. So frankly, you know, the, uh, the Terra is behaving better than the rest. You know, it's a $2.5 billion market cap. Uh, the numbers are supportive of it. They're double digit. You know, like the earnings were up 94% uh, last quarter, 100% the quarter before that. So I think you've got a great winner here, and I think you stay with it. Pick a, pick a, a stop below the price you've, you were at today, and be prepared not to get out at the highs. And then I would stay with it, because I think it may be that we're headed into a new swing higher in some of these agricultural uh, uh, fertilizer stocks. And uh, certainly the leading stock off the bottom tends to be the leading stock most of the way through the rally. All right, well, thanks for that explanation and the call as well, because that, that's a stock we haven't talked about on this show. Uh, here's one we have. Uh, John's in London, Ontario. Hi there. Hi, David and Mark. How are you? Very well. Hi there. Yellow, yellow Media. Hmm. I've made money on it in the past. It's still got a healthy dividend. I can't believe the naysayers. The stock is not going to zero. It's just fallen out of favor because there is the paradigm that Yellow Pages is the whole business. Um, and so I'm waiting for one astute analyst to support my position. Thank you. Well, I think you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm, perhaps I'm not astute. Uh, I'm, I'm of the belief that the market tells you things you don't know. And very often, if something is doing, behaving in a way that you don't think is right, there could be something you're missing. And um, the biggest rule in investing is don't have a disaster. You can make little mistakes. You can't make big ones. I found trying to buy, pick a bottom on a stock is a very tough thing. Uh, now, when I look at a company, I look at the numbers to say, are the numbers getting better? And they aren't. They're getting worse. And they're getting, a, I think, a lot worse. There's deterioration in the revenue. There's deterioration in the earnings. Uh, the stock is behaving horribly. Now, it's a tough market but it's behaving worse than most stocks. Uh, and I found trying to buy a stock, trading at two or three bucks, hoping it turns around is a bit of a mugs game. Maybe they get it right, maybe they don't. But you know, $2 to zero is 100% loss. It's no different than $100 to zero. And so I would, I would stay away. I'd take whatever money you got left in the, in the position and, and steer clear. Somebody will be smart enough to pick a bottom, but that's really like throwing a dart, and I think it's a tough game. And it's been said that one thing investors should not do and do not want to do is uh, fall in love with a stock or be so convinced about your 
position and be stubborn about just, it. Just remember, there's a zillion smart people out there looking at these companies all day, every day. And if it was such a screaming opportunity, other folks will be recognizing it. You know, we don't ever make an investment in a company that isn't behaving the way it should, given what we think we know. So if the fundamentals are getting better and the share price is going lower, we make the assumption we're missing something. Mm -hmm. And I think that that may turn out to be the case in this one. Let's uh, squeeze in Murray here. Uh, he's got a question about Ford Motor. You still there, Murray? Oh, that would be me. All right, go ahead. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Um, David, I, uh, I have a three-pronged question for you, if you don't mind. Shoot. I have some Canadian banks and I have some Acon. Now, I would like to buy some Ford. Do you think I should sell either of my stocks, lighten up a little bit? What do you think I should do? Where's the best opportunity okay. there? Thank you. you. Give us 30 here if you could. Okay, so, so, so save time for your past. Yes, so, so really quick, I, what I'd say is um, I like the auto group, uh, and I think that we're going to see a little turn in the group uh, as we get further through this quarter, which is going to be a tougher quarter. Uh, so I think you're on the right track to look at the group. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Canadian banks in general. I think that earnings multiples are compressing because the return on equity is tougher, and this quarter is going to be tough for their trading revenues. Um, so I would be inclined to take some money from one of the banks. Um, I would wait to see a little more strength in the Ford before I entered. Um, let's, let's see the market show us the strength. But we're going to talk about an auto stock later, and I think it is a, a worthwhile sector to be taking a look at. All right, very good, David. We will take a short break here and come back with... David Burrell's past picks after this.